Hi, in this video I'll show you how to group data in Power Query. So what does this mean? Let's say for example we have a table like this. This is a five column table. Uh, it's a properly set table and what we want to do is just group some data. Let's say for example we want to group data uh, based on maybe group A or the, the grouping that these items show up in and we want to see those items and we want to see the quantity and we want to see regions. Now I'm going to kind of compare this with grouping within pivot tables. So if you're familiar with a pivot table, you probably know that you can also group data. So we have this group grouping here, which is very similar to this. We have this item here, which is very similar to this. And we have the sum of quantity, which is very similar to this column C here. But one difference is that with grouping in Power Query, you can do a lot more things in terms of uh, getting the information out of this specific row of data. So I'm going to show you what that means when I bring uh, this up and show you an example. So in this particular example where we have Power Query, we could also show the regions that comprise of this row. So in group A, uh, item 2 with a quantity of 5, we can say, oh, which regions are part of this five, of this group A, item two, of this five. They're the north and west regions. Now, in a pivot table, we're not really able to do that and create a separate column for that. Now, if you uh, double click the sum here, you can actually get a separate table that has this information, but in a table form. Whereas in Power Query, we have a separate column that brings out the details of the items that make up this specific uh, row this group A item 2 with its quantity of 5. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done and you can get a better view of what I mean. So here we are in Excel and I've got my table set up here. We've got my date, my item, my grouping, my region, my quantity. And what I need to do is I want to go ahead and have a Power Query tab available. Now Power Query is an add-on in Excel 2010 and Excel version 2013 where you have to download it and enable it. You can just go ahead and Google Power Query Excel download and you'll find instructions from Microsoft.com to uh, download it and enable it. But I've got it enabled here. I'll go ahead and, and click on Power Query tab here and what I'm going to do is I want to get my data from the table. So this is a table right here. I can click anywhere within this, in this cell and click from table and it's going to bring up a separate window where, which is the Power Query editor. Now you can see that it's actually brought up the that range of data already. And uh, I don't really need to do too much in terms of uh, uh, editing the data types here because uh, they've brought it in from Excel. Now if you had data that's coming from another source and you weren't too sure of the data types, you can also um, change the data type. So if I clicked in this column. You can see here my, my I'm in my home tab here under the transform. It has uh, selected the data, date, and time, which this is. And uh, these items here, these are text. So it's brought them in as text. You can see that if I click on here, it's brought it in, in as text. This last column is a number. So if I click on that, you notice that it's brought that in as number. So I don't need to worry too much about that. But what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and group by the item and this group. So what I can do is I can select this, press the uh, control or shift key. I'll just use the control key so I can multi-select. I can click on those two and I'm going to go ahead and under the home tab here, I'm going to click group by. And it's going to come up with another window and it's going to ask me what I'm going to group by. Since I already selected there here, uh, that particular column, these two last, these second column and the third column, it's brought it in here. Now, if I didn't select that, I can also add it here. So let me go ahead and show you what that does. Uh, if I just select it, if I didn't select anything, let me go ahead and just uh, uh, select something else. Select just one item here and click group by. You notice that only one of the columns showed up. I can just go ahead and click that plus sign and I can add another column. So that was the group column. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Now what I want to do is I want to group by that item and group by that group. And I want to do a, a count or a um, sum of the, the quantity here. So I'm going to go ahead and just do uh, quanti quantity. I'm just going to do quantity. And what I want to do is I just want to sum those values here, this value in this last column. So if I do that, now I want to select the column that I want to sum, select on the quantity here. I'll go ahead and click OK, and it has grouped it. So you see that the final output looks like this. 
And this is in the query editor window. What I can do is I can click close and load and it's going to open up a new worksheet here and bring that data in here. So you can see that it is grouped by item and grouping and quantity. Now, when we really think about it, grouping should come first because uh, item is going to be a subset of group. What I can do here is I can go back. Let me go ahead and just, uh, I have my work, work queries here. I'm going to go in. Uh, click on, I hover it over here, it flies out this menu here, I'm going to go and click edit. Another way to do it is I can right click here and select edit and it will bring me back into the query editor. Now what I can do here is I can move that grouping over, I can move this grouping over here, just left click, drag and move it over. So uh, you can just think of this as, as the higher level um, uh, parent of this uh, of this child here. So we have grouping, we have item, we have a quantity. After I did that, I can go ahead and just click close and load. It's going to bring me back into the Excel sheet and it's going to move uh, that grouping back to the first column or back or move it to the first column. Now, you may think, okay, I've got this grouping here. I've got group, item, quantity. Why didn't I just make a pivot table? So here's what here's an example of my pivot table here. So if I select on this particular data table and go to insert and pivot table, it's going to go through the process of letting me create a pivot table. I'm just going to go ahead and create it within uh, this particular worksheet uh, location. I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, uh, L3 here. Click OK. And I'm going to bring the group over here. I'm going to bring the item over here. And I'm going to bring the quantity over the value. So it's going to sum it up since it knows its numbers. Now, this is in a compact format. So usually I like to go ahead and go into Design and change the report layout. By default, it is in compact form, but if I change the tabular form, you'll notice it looks almost very similar to what we have here in sheet one. Uh, all I need to do is just adjust some of the subtotals and remove them. What I can do is click within the pivot table and under grand totals, I'm going to remove that off for rows and columns and remove the subtotals. So, so that, that's going to disappear now. So I'll click on that. And now you notice this basically is almost the exact same as this where I actually have uh, some of these headings here. So let me go ahead and uh, change that. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to design and under report layout I'm going to have repeat all items. So group A is going to repeat it down here because group A item 1 and 2 fall under group A. So I'm going to go ahead and click repeat all items. You now you notice it looks very similar. Uh, it's sorted by lowest to highest based on the sum of quantity. If I did the same here and I sorted lowest to highest um, it'll look the same. Uh, I think I'm going to go back into the, uh, I'm going to go back and edit it back into the query editor and go under here and sort sort ascending 5, 5, 20, 23, 47. Go ahead and click close and load. And now you notice it looks pretty much the same. So I'm going to go ahead and show these two here. You will notice that we have group A, these five uh, rows, 5, 5, 20, 23, 47. And here we have 5, 5, 20, 23, 47. So you might want to think to yourself, why would I want to create a grouping with Power Query uh, versus just doing it in Excel? So let me go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint and show you why. Now, if I showed earlier, we have our power, our pivot table that shows this outline, and we have our Power Query which shows this. I, didn't ha I haven't created this extra column D here, but with Power Query, you can create this, and it indicates that um, regions north and west are part of this row, group A, item 2, and this quantity of five. So if you notice, we have uh, group A, which is here, and item two, which is there. We have our one there. If we go down here, group A, item two, we have also one here. Uh, group A, item two, oh, well, actually group A, item two, we have a three. So that adds up to five. So we have west, and then we have um, west here, and then we have uh, north here. So it, it tells us that the regions north and west comprise of that grouping. We can't really get that from here unless we go and double click this. Let me go back in Excel and show you what that does. So we're back in Excel and uh, we showed item 2 here. So if I double click the cell, let me go and double click it. It brings up another sheet and it shows you the items within that table. So if I go here, this particular grouping, group A, item 2, this quantity of 5, it brought back uh, these three records. Let me go ahead and double click it to auto fit here. It brought back these three records which fulfilled that row, which are which comprise that row. As you can see, if I sum it up, it's five, uh, west, west, and north. Now, if we just wanted to have a row that just showed us what regions are there in a comma separated values where we just have north and west, we can create that in Power Query. We can't really do that that easily in Power Pivot. 
let me show you how it, it looks. So I'm back here in Excel and what I want to do is I want to edit that Power Query. So I'm going to go ahead and click here, right click, click Edit, and I'm going to go ahead and change uh, the groupings. So, so I want to change some of the parameters in how I grouped that data. So I'm going to go in the third step here where it says Group Rows, click this gear icon, and it's going to bring back up the Group By window here. And what I want to do is I want to add an extra um, grouping here, extra column. So it's going to add an extra column here besides the quantity column. Go ahead and click the plus sign. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm just going to call this uh, region list. Region, I just, you can give it any name. And I'm going to call it region list. And instead of sum, I'm going to, I want to call, I want to have this all rows. So it's going to bring up all the rows that comprise that particular row, right? If I click OK, you notice that it put in a different column here. And if I just, if I just click the, that particular column, or let me go back to group A, uh, item 2 group A, right? If I click that particular uh, cell in that column, you see that it has given me that table. And this is very similar to when I double click the pivot table, right? We have these three records here, and they add up to five. It's north and two west. So let me go back in the cell, and you'll see what it looks like. Let me go ahead and just close and load. I'm going to change it later on. It's brought this in here, but let me show you what it looks it looks like. So earlier, you saw those three records, right? We have uh, north. Let me go ahead and just make this in alphabetical order. So we had north, and we had the two west. So we had one, three, one. So it's very similar to what we had there when we did the Power Query. So let me go back into the Power Query window. Go to Sheet 1 here, and I'm going to go right click. Uh, edit, or I just click. I can just hover over here and click Edit. So maybe I want to create a separate column with comma-separated values of what I showed earlier in the PowerPoint. Um, instead of having this table, so if you click on this table, well, let me go ahead and click on Item Two here. So what this table does here, this table uh, context here under the under the uh, column, it just tells you that for that particular row, there is a subtable or there's a table that comprises all the records in here. So that table is available for us where we can do some further manipulation with that data. So in this example, what I showed here is we created another column that shows you comma separate, value, comma separate values of the regions that comprise that data in that particular row. So what we need to do is kind of get, it gets a little bit more sophisticated where we have to use the M code. So the M code is basically the language that is used in Power Query to uh, make these steps happen. So for example, uh, this particular task, it is this M code, table.sort, and this <laughs> arrangement of words. So if I click on any, each of these steps, you'll notice that the arrangement or the syntax of commands is a little bit different. So that's what actually M code looks like. Now when we cr click on the uh, commands here, uh, basically that's creating M code for each of the steps. If I go down each of the steps, this is basically M code. And if we wanted to create that comma separate value on this table and kind of manipulate some of the data here, we have to write a little bit of M code. Uh, I originally got this idea from uh, Ken Pulse and Miguel Escobar. They have a fantastic website called uh, PowerQuery.Training, and they've got a lot of good stuff there. And uh, I took uh, one of the, the snippets that they had and kind of adjusted it for this particular example. So let me show you what that looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column and put that end code into that column. So I've got my, my table here, and I'm going to go under the Add Column tab click on Add Custom Column, and it's going to give me the window to add my column. So I'm going to call this just a region list again. And then the code is, let me go ahead and just paste the code here, and I'll describe what it does. So basically, there are a couple commands within this particular set of M code. So let me describe to you what the M code is doing here. Uh, actually, let me call this uh, new column name region list two because I named one of the columns region list the first one here. So starting from the last or the most inner part of the M code syntax, I have this table dot column uh, expression or this function, and what it's telling me is it's going to look at that region list, that particular table. Uh, I showed you at the bottom there, and it's going to take that column out of there. And once it takes that column out of there, it's going to put it into this table dot from list expression. And this from list is basically going to turn that table into a list. And what this happens here after that, it's going to take that output and take the distinct values from that list. So as you know earlier, uh, from item two 
in uh, grouping A, we had uh, one north value and two west values. And what this distinct this distinct table dot distinct uh, expression does is it just takes the distinct values out of there. So from that north uh, comma west comma west is just going to take north and west, and that's in a vertical list. And what it's going to do here with this table dot transpose is it's going to take that one column list and it's going to spread it over uh, multiple columns, basically one row and multiple columns. So it's going to take one column for north and then one column for west. And then it's going to take that value and put it into this table dot to list command and then join it. So basically instead of having two columns, it's going to combine those two columns together and combine them and then it's going to separate it by a comma here. So let me click OK and show you the output. So basically it, it looks like it didn't do really do anything but it created a separate column called region list 2. So if I clicked on this expander icon, it's going to show me the particular output now. So when I had my item 2 here, we had remember we had one north and two west in the table here. Let me go ahead and click on that. You see you see that it had one north and two west. Basically what it's done is it's put that into one column and then spread that over uh, three columns. So when you have to think about it where it had north, west, and west and now it took the distinct values, it basically got rid of that one west and put that all into one cell here. Uh, another example, let me just go ahead and go down to this particular row, row four here, where we had uh, two norths or three norths and one west and basically it's made the distinct value and brought in one north and one west and put it all into one cell here. So basically it's counting uh, which particular regions make up this particular row here. So if I click on, let me go back to the home key, if I click on close and load, uh, you'll notice that it's brought back uh, those four um, columns. Uh, maybe I really didn't need this first column, this column D. Let me go ahead and uh, right click and go to edit. And I'm just going to go ahead and get, get rid of this. Click on this particular column, right click and click remove. And we just have our four columns here. Click close and load and it's brought us back to the Excel where now I have my grouping and I've got my distinct values for that particular record. So as I showed you before, um, we can do some extra manipulation uh, using Power Query. So basically what grouping does in Power Query, it, it gives you a little bit more sophistication in terms of what you can do with your grouping. You can do very similar grouping with a pivot table where we have our pivot table here and we have our quantity here, but with Power Query, you have a little bit more sophistication, a little bit more manipulation that you can do with the data that's actually behind uh, this particular row. So if I double click that, we have our three records here for that particular row. And with Power Query, we can do some additional manipulation off of that record. So that's just one example of what you can do. There's many other examples that you can do. Unfortunately, you have to probably learn a little bit more on the mQuery language. But once you do, it gives you a little bit more power in terms of what you can do with your groupings. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.